very excited <laughs> about Jimmy being here as well. Ready to go. The officials Brian O'Connell, Kip Kissinger, and Matt Potter, and underway. He said JG3 is back. We're looking forward to a breakout year from him. And of course, the orange in the 2-3 zone. Where will the shots come from for the Dragons? How about Cameron Winter, the preseason player of the year? As always, the fans here at the Dome will stand and clap until the first bucket of the game for the home team. Jimmy Beheim, the lefty, uses the right hand and allows everybody to sit down. Contesting shots, that makes it even more difficult. Isn't it nice when what happens on the court backs up the story you're telling right at that moment? Well, I mean, that's, that's the storytelling. <laughs> Three-point shooting teams that Jim Beheim has ever had in Syracuse, and it's led by one of his two sons and Buddy Beheim. Here's an open three on kind of a broken play, and that's Mate Okrus. A couple of looks from outside have gone down. Coach Mike Krzyzewski announcing that this will be his last season. I had an opportunity to spend some time with Coach Beheim this summer. I asked him, are you heading out? I'm not going to tell you what he said verbatim, but admit no. <laughs> he just loves to watch the game. A deflection by Gerard to force another turnover. Buddy Beheim again. Beheim the miss. Jimmy Beheim keeps it alive, but back in transition now. Bell. And the follow will go for Okrus. He's grinding it out like the rest of us he are. He is, and, and you've got to be extremely <laughs> proud and happy for you. This is a great opportunity to be able to do this alongside your son, and I can't wait to hear his call from him later. <laughs> well, he's shooting the basketball very well, and that's one of the things we know about this Drexel team. They're not scared to fire away from three, and if you're going to beat the Syracuse zone, you have to do it. Becoming the starter as Barana Sidibe injured once again. How about Okrus? That's his third three already. He told me earlier today he wanted his guys to take enough threes and play well enough to where they have a chance at the under four. That's the biggest concern. So if you want to go four minute increments, that's fine. He's concerned about the first 36 to get him under four. Looks like Jimmy Beheim took a shot on that one. Grimacing a bit coming up to the court. Torrance into Anselm. Good patience and a power finish. Winter the kick, Juric the extra pass, Lamar Odin Jr. misses the three. Great rebound and put back though for Amari Williams. He's a winner in spades today, and he's really acting like I owe money or something. <laughs> well, congratulations and thank you for joining us. What has today been like for you? You can talk about a lady named Thelia Leggett, my mother, and this is what it's all about. It's an honor of her. Well, when you think back about this day, and not only that, but you give this to your players at Buffalo. Well, when my, my players come to um, uh, Buffalo, the first thing they do is write down, what will your legacy be? They're 17 years old. They don't even know how to wipe their nose. But I say you have to have an idea of what that could be. Or days when it's not good, they say, you know what? You gave your best effort. They told the truth. That's called brotherhood and sisterhood. Yeah. And I, they have them. They could have come any other game. They chose this game to be here, and I'm humbled by that. Trey Brown in up top right now for Drexel. Coltrane Washington in the game as well. They continue to move the ball pretty well around and get good looks as Brown knocks it down, and that's going to tie the game. Because I love Monday Night Football, but this Peyton and Eli yeah. show is so good <laughs> <laughs> that I find myself watching that as Brown knocks down another three. Wow. One of the things that when you consider Syracuse and playing freshmen, Outside of Carmelo Anthony and Jerry McNamara, yeah. it hasn't been a great place for freshmen to be successful over the past 18 or so years. And, of course, he's the biggest Drexel fan, also on it with one of the board of trustees. Jesse Edwards with the shot clock running out. Well, you see it more so at the NBA level, but and that's where Jesse Edwards can be a difference maker on the interior. We saw him make strides last year where he may play big games as we see Drexel continue to shoot a hot basketball from outside. Nice look inside. Pretty two-man basketball between Swider and Edwards. A year ago, Jim Beheim earned gaining trust in Edwards coming into this season. How about Swider stepping in defensively? And how about the reverse by Jimmy Beheim? Jimmy as a lefty. Getting it done with the right hand. Cole Swider stepping in with the steal, which, of course, you're known for in the zone for Syracuse. But Jim, Jimmy going to the right hand reverse. And the difference is, is you're going to be a much better basketball player at age 22 than you are at 18. 
as Buddy Beheim can attest to as well. Brown finds Martin, who knocks down the three, and what a way to finish the half for Drexel. The fans here at the Dome standing and clapping again, waiting for the first bucket of the second half, and there it is, thanks to Cole Swider. You know, I always think there's so much pressure on them to score that first bucket. I did a game here years ago. Tommy Amaker was coaching Seton Hall at the time, and Seton Hall led like 8-0 going to the first timeout. <laughs> Didn't get it there in time. I can only imagine the dynamic between those two guys. Jimmy. This is that experience on an entirely different level. But you got to imagine for Jimmy how so different it is when you come into the ACC and Buddy's a preseason first team all ACC performer, but he's still little brother. Yes. <laughs> and big brother says, don't forget about me. Back to back buckets for Jimmy Behan. Oh, Edwards got all of that. You could see it. You could hear it, too. Just a different energy about the Orange here in the opening minutes of the second half. Shot clock running down. Odin gets it off. Great rebound by James Butler and the putback. Rebounding's in the family. His dad, Vernon, a terrific player at Navy back in the day with David Robinson and his sister, Natalie, set the women's D1 single-season rebounding record a few years ago at George Mason. Yeah, but you know, it's tough going in being a great rebounder realizing you're third best in your family. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what he does. He's not catching dad and not catching sis. How about Edwards running the floor and Gerard finding him? Derek Coleman go with the finger once. I believe he either dunked on the Kimmy Matumbo or Shaq. Gerard with a steal and the lay-in. Okrus, and he continues his big day. 14 now for Mate Okrus. And even though Syracuse made a run, you see Okrus stepping up, knocking down the three to make it a two-possession game. Turnaround, Bayheim, and again, that's one of the areas where he has really improved. And Buddy knows his game. He knows he's not going to be more athletic than the guys defending him most times, but he uses that size and does a great job defensively. From the corner, the three goes down for Lamar Odin Jr. out of Powder Springs, Georgia, if the name Odin sounds familiar. And off the top of the backboard, down to Swider. I'd be interested to see if Edwards got a piece of that one for his fifth block shot. Jimmy Beheim says Buddy's not the only shooter in the family. Thank you very much. Eight-point lead for Syracuse. How about Jimmy Beheim? I think we said it in the first step, but we should say it again. He's a lefty, but he's doing a great work around the rim with his right hand. That's usually enough. So if you're not one of the top five, you're going to have to earn your way onto the court. Especially as a freshman. Yeah. <laughs> Another three. This time it is Coltrane Washington. As the three ball gave Drexel the lead in the first half, keeping him in the game in the second half. Buddy Beheim down the other way. He's got 15. Monday Night Football coverage also available on ESPN and the ESPN app. Turnaround by Buddy Beheim will go. He's got 17. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice inside-outside combination. All kinds of upside for Williams. How about the turnaround again from Buddy Beheim? He's got 21. Winter. Boy, he was looking even. Whoa! Oh. Benny Williams! Williams. Well, tip back up and in. Somehow, Anselm will get credit for it. It'll teach Jim Beheim a lot about his team. And we'll say this is not a characteristic schedule of Jim Beheim and his group, but that is characteristic of my buddy, Buddy <laughs> Beheim. Buddy Beheim did the majority of his scoring in a different way in this game in comparison to him. Shooting the three, he's been able to get to the basket, use his size to shoot over defenders. Williams trying to drive baseline. And a turnover. Winter pulls up and gets the bounce. But destroyed my headset, landed on me, but... Uh, I like to think my feet were set. I took the charge on that. <laughs> well, Dick, Dickie V definitely gave you the call. Yeah. Uh, many times. Yes. 
And the Orange on their way to a 2-0 start of the season. Trailed by one at the half, but it pulled away here in the second half. A little bit sloppy late as Winter gets the lay-in for the Dragons. An opportunity to talk with Coach Behan. It's been a great day here, not only for the Orange, but for us here at ESPN.